I want to spend a little time going over some common myths and misconceptions that I find with students who take my class. Uh, and this is kind of science, chemistry, etc. related. Um, I know you're not going to like some of these that I go over. <laughs> I guess you just kind of have to deal with that a little bit. But uh, I'm just going to share with you some of my experience about these things. So why don't we take a look at a couple of these. First of all, I can do anything if I put my mind to it. Really? <laughs> so anybody can be an expert contortionist, or an MVP in basketball, or a horse jockey, or an expert pianist, or flautist, or etc. I, I personally don't think so. I think people are gifted in different areas, in particular areas, and they have talents in those areas. And so, uh, you know, this is really a statement that people say after they've won something, okay? After they've succeeded, and I can put, of course you say that. The losers never say stuff like this, okay? Uh, if this were true, then everybody who had the dream of being a Super Bowl champion would win. And obviously that doesn't happen to everybody. I think you need to go in the area where your talents are. The second one I hear a lot, a lot. The harder I study, the better I will do. And even I explain to people why I disagree with the statement, and they still believe it. This can't get out of their mind. But let me describe this. Usually, what I've noticed is that when students study harder, that's not always their problem. Sometimes their problem is a different problem, say stress or worry. And how will studying harder allow you to do better and remove stress and worry? For most students I've met, because uh, usually they're coming in with decent study skills, studying harder isn't the key. Maybe studying more efficiently is one thing, important thing they can do. The other thing is find a way to get to reduce your stress and your worry. Um, I think that students could save a bunch of time if they studied more efficiently. And if they put their time into studying a little bit less sometimes and figuring out how to get rid of some of their stress and worry that they uh, go through during taking a class or on an exam, they're going to do a lot better and they're going to save a lot of time. Chemistry is impossible and really difficult. What I think is that the material in chemistry and other science classes is understandable. And if you're going through some particular subject, and after 15 minutes you're not making any progress, I would immediately stop and at your next opportunity go see the instructor or the TA so they can explain to you how to do that problem. But that's how simple I think this is. It's not that you might master every single problem, but that you can understand it uh, and at least uh, get through the class. Anyone can get an A in chemistry. <laughs> You might understand from some of my previous comments that I just don't think that's true. I think anyone can improve their scores on their exams. But hey, I really think that's true. That you can do better on a particular exam and improve your scores. However, again, I think different people have different talents and you're not always going to get the scores you want. That's kind of related to the next one. I got A's in high school, so I'll get A's in college. <laughs> That's definitely uh, not always true, because in high school, um, they're giving out a lot more A's, and then coming into, you know, a pretty decent college, most people are coming in with a pretty high GPA, mostly A's and maybe some B's. Because of that, uh, not everybody's going to be able to get an A in college, because you're thinking in your average science class, 10 to 20 percent uh, are going to be in the A range, and so there's going to be a lot of people, maybe anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of people are, are, are going to be the ones who are getting A's and that could be just a particular science class maybe they go to a different science class and they're not going to get an A again. And then this last one kind of in its own category, a little separate category but because I have a lot of pre-med majors I hear this a lot. I'm going to med school because I want to help people. Now I totally think that's nice but just uh, a lame reason to go to med school. If you want to help people, I, I could think of a lot of other professions that would be uh, get you right to the person a lot better and faster. Why don't you be a physician's assistant or a counselor 
or a social worker. You don't even have to take as much school or pay as much money. Why, why do you want to waste 10 years of your life after college and hundreds of thousands of dollars in med school when you can help people in other ways? Um, so I think if you're given that kind of reason, you need to think med school out a little bit more. Um, sometimes you want to make money, but there's a lot of other ways that you can make money. Um, if you're immoral, you can deal drugs. Uh, but if you're more moral, you can, you know, certain types of engineering, patent law, oil industry, uh, investment banking, crab fishing in Alaska, dentists, etc., make a lot of money. Um, so, I think you should look out for good reasons to go to med school. Maybe that fits your personality, you love to study, your passion allows you to overcome all obstacles. Things like that, you really got to find for yourself uh, why you'd want to go uh, to med school unless instead of becoming like a certified nurse. In fact, when I've been to the hospitals, usually the person that I say the least is the doctor because they're always busy with other stuff. So I see the doctor or even uh, like a dentist for about 30 seconds, a couple minutes sometimes, but it's really other people that are helping me out uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So these are just some of the myths I've come across. Probably some of my answers really tick you off, but this is some of my opinions of what I've seen.